These days, there's all kinds of ways to hustle, and trappers are more clever than ever. Just recently, almost a dozen Wu members got charged after they allegedly stole over $4 million from the government during the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's what went down. Nah, niggas turned a pandemic to a pandemic. That's crazy. On Thursday, February 17th, 11 members of the Wu, a Brooklyn-based gang, made up of several allied sets, was charged in a massive scheme to steal over $20 million in unemployment funds. The police were suspicious because members of the gang was posting on social media about buying foreign cars and other expensive items during the early days of the pandemic. That money was meant to help those who lost their job because of the pandemic, but these scammers found a different use for the funds. Police opened up an investigation and discovered that Wu affiliates used stolen IDs to make claims for unemployment benefits under other people's names. In New York, how do people, yo, look, I, I, I always be wondering, right, chap? How do people, like, scam without getting caught? I, I, I'm telling you guys right now. Nowadays, bro, if you do scam, you're going to get caught. But how do people get, like, fake IDs, get other people's IDs? How do people scam without getting caught, bro? That, that's what I always want to know. People who applied for COVID-related unemployment were given ATM cards, direct deposits to their bank accounts, or checks. Cashing out with an ATM card under a stolen identity turned out to be way too easy. A public information commissioner for the NYPD said, the result of this was like gang criminal magic. It was a never ending spigot of money because when you tapped out the funds from one identity, you simply move on to another, and to another, and to another. Imagine a bottomless ATM that was free and just spit out cash. Since this was happening at the beginning of the pandemic, police had their hands full of more serious issues. Everything was so crazy at the time that it was easy for fake claims to slip through the system. At one point, so many people were trying to file for benefits that the website crashed and Google had to help them redesign it. A lot of people lost their jobs and were struggling to get by, so the system was designed to work fast. These Wu members hopped on a chance for a quick payday and basically printed out their own money. They used the dark web and other sources to buy the info they needed to make claims. According to court documents, they bought driver's licenses for $150 each. Then they used the info to withdraw thousands of dollars in benefits. By the time they was caught, they applied for over $20 million and already collected $4.3 million. God damn. And like, the crazy part is, bro, that they will literally post all this shit on Instagram, on Snapchat, all that shit, and be like, oh, turn the pandemic to a pandemic. Oh, like, oh, scam tapping. People are dumb. Like, bro, I promise you, if they didn't, like, flaunt and, like, flex all this shit on the internet and act put it on the Instagram and shit like that, most of them probably wouldn't have got caught. But you know how niggas is, bro. They get some stuff, they want to want to flex it, buy mad new cars, when they literally have no taxes for it. Like, bro, you, you your last job was at McDonald's, bro. How the fuck do you have a Porsche? How the fuck do you have a, like, how, how do you have this? How do you have a scat now, bro? Like, it doesn't make no if sense. If these dudes move think, smarter, they, they probably would never been caught. But flexing for the gram ended up leading to their downfall. They started flashing giant stacks of cash, new Ferraris and BMWs, and trips on private jets. Yeah, like, how are you, how, bro, how are you on a private jet when your last job was literally at McDonald's, bro? You have nothing to show for it. Their departments dedicated to monitoring social media to collect evidence. Anytime someone with gang ties starts posting photos of a mansion they rented in Beverly Hills, the cops get suspicious. And they ain't just brag about it on social media. Another piece of evidence was when several wolves showed up in a music video for the song Trapping, and one of them raps, Unemployment got us working a lot. But this ain't the only hit the Wu have taken this month. On Tuesday, February 1st, T. Wu was killed in a drive by in Brooklyn just a few hours after he signed a record deal with Million Dollar Music. Yeah, he walked outside, sucks. and someone in a dark SUV started letting off shots. His grandmother told a reporter, It seems like somebody called him and he went outside. I hear the four shots, three in his back, and one in his head. I think Damn. it was boom, 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 boom. Very quick, rapid shots. No one's been arrested for the shooting, and the police haven't named any suspects. Still? Nah, see, I didn't know, like, I thought, like, people just hit the crimes easily. That's fucking depressing, bro. Imagine, like, like somebody dying, like, you know, bro, and the police still haven't found them to this day. That happened, like, what, 2020? It's because, like, the pandemic and all that. Now it's 2023. That's depressing, chap. His grandma's story makes it sound like it could have been a setup, but there ain't too much evidence to go off of right now. After that, he died, was social media blew up was. with people posting their condolences. Million Dollar Music posted a photo of him to Instagram with the caption, It's an honor to remain your friend until your last moments. Your memories will always stay with us no matter where we go and what we do. Sleep in peace. Hashtag long live T-Dot. Just know his legacy will always live. From his laugh to the dance everyone across the world does. Some of us know him a friend, brother, cousin, or just a fan. But we all come together to tell you, fly high. T-Dot was friends with Pop Smoke and dancing the music video for Welcome to the Party. He also showed up in 5 year Foreign's video for Big Drip. Fabio posted a message to his dead homie on Instagram that said, I'ma miss you forever, baby boy. You was a prince of this city. Long live Prince T Dot. I love you, gang. Like forever watch over me like you always do. T Dot just one more tragic death in New York's drill scene. One week after he died, an 18-year-old drill rapper named Shy Watts was ambushed outside of a recording studio and shot to death. Shy Watts. Bro, bro, I keep saying shot. Black people are literally just free KKK members, bro. We will literally kill our own people. Then be like, oh, fuck 12, oh, BLM, 
but literally go out and kill somebody that looks just like you. It doesn't make sense. Now, that's why I say, chat, black people are the new age KKK members, bro, because all we do is kill each other. That's all we do. That's literally all we do. And then and then the moms want to be like, oh, he was a good kid. No, you're lying. Because that kid came home and smelled like fucking backwoods and weed all day. Came home, but walk, walking all weird. That nigga has an AK-47 U tucked in his fucking pants, bro. Like, he wasn't a good kid. He was out here killing other people, throwing up gang signs. Wanted to be all cool. Until the day finally happened where he got caught lacking. And then he got shot in the head, bro. It's fucking depressing. Boss is affiliated with K-Flock, who's facing a murder charge after allegedly killing the dude back in December. The Wolves and the Chosen have been at each other's necks for 10 years. The Wolves were originally called Wave Gang and were made up of Blood and Crip sets. The Chosen was called Hood Stars and was made up of Gangsta Disciples and other gangs. But both gangs was almost wiped off the map in 2012. With all the violence happening in the streets, there's been a push from politicians to ban drill music from social media platforms. NYC Mayor Eric Adams said in a recent press conference, we pulled Trump off of Twitter because of what he was spewing. Yeah, yeah, bro, yo, I don't lie. Yo, I, bro, I would definitely go for um pulling drill music, bro. If drill music will stop, like if like anybody pulls drill music and that's just automatically deleted off YouTube, I'll be happy. I'm not gonna lie. Drill music is literally, it's literally just like a hypnosis sound to kill your own kind, and it's like you don't see white on white killings every single day, but all you see is black on black killings. But then niggas still go BLM. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Explain of guns violence we're allowed it to stay on these sites i mean we pulled trump off twitter because of what he was spewing yet we are allowing uh, uh, music displaying of guns violence we're allowing it to stay uh, on these sites adams ain't the only one who wants to take drill off of social media the brooklyn da says that the music is directly responsible for violence in the city soren baker who wrote a book called the history of gangster rap says that drill is getting people killed According to him, artists have gotten killed because they say, I have beef with this person, and this is where I am. The efficiency of releasing these songs leads to the violence happening. It is true that drill artists seem more likely to catch a body than others. A 22-year-old Cho affiliate named Nas Blicky was shot and almost killed in January. Now his dad wants him to drop his stage name and leave drill music behind to get away from the violence. He got caught in the same Brooklyn neighborhood as his homie Nick Blicky, who got killed in May 2020. Police and politicians think that banning the music will stop the violence, but others say that the I, music- I think, I think it would. Yeah, to be honest, you think you think banning drill music will stop the violence? I think it would. Because think about it, bro. All it is is literally just this, literally like people that look just like May you. May 2020. Doing this shit, posting like the devil's piss, smoking weed and shit in the background. Police someone, and politicians think that banning the music shit, will stop like, the thinking, like, violence. Thinking like having like illegal guns and doing this shit is cool. This shit is not cool, bro. Like, are are you, do you, are you this dumb? Like, are you dumb, bro? The police is looking at this, at this video, bro. Are you dumb or fucking retarded, man? That's illegal, that's illegal. Probably got switches on it. And like, you're showing your face on the camera, bro. Like, how dumb do you have to be, man? But others say that the music is just a reflection of the conditions a lot of these young rappers grow up in. Bobby Schmurter's lawyer says, censoring drill music is a distraction. Bobby's complications in life had to do with the community he grew up in. The music reflected what he saw in the community. Some believe that cracking down on the music so is just a way to make it seem like the authorities are doing something. Most drill artists come from hoods full of crime and violence, and music is just an outlet. Music is part of the culture. Yeah, and that's the most cope depressing shit I've ever heard in my life. Music is part of um the culture of us killing each other. So imagine this. Imagine like imagine if people start saying like some love shit in the streets, start playing some like I'm I'm not joking around. Start playing some more jazz music, start playing some more like, you know, loving music. I I will promise you the 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 rate of like aggressiveness and like just fucking dumbness will go down. I promise you. Let. Chief Keefe's ex-manager says the music didn't create the violence. The violence created the music. New York ain't the only city trying to ban violent music. A few years ago, authorities in the UK tried to place a similar ban on drill music. A UK drill rapper named Digga D has to give the police transcripts of his lyrics before he can release a new song. He spent w. a year in prison for planning w. a gang attack, w. and police used his music videos as evidence in the trial. W. After the mayor of New York said he wanted to ban drill from social media, he met with a group of artists, including Fabio Foreign, to discuss the situation. He told a reporter, I told him what I said. That violent people who are using drill rapping to post who they killed and then to antagonize the people who they're going to kill is what the problem is. And they heard me. And we're going to be rolling out something in the next few days to deal with this issue. People who are using drill rapping to post who they killed and then antagonize the people who they are going to kill is what the problem is. Exactly. No one knows what the mayor's plan is or if it'll even help. But in the meantime, the violence in New York keeps getting worse. There was 100 shootings in January, and overall crime was up almost 40% over the last year. 
but not all gang activity involves violence. If the Wu affiliates charged in this unemployment case had kept quiet about what they had going on, they would have made millions without anyone getting caught up. They should have known the cops was watching their moves anyway, because the police been monitoring the violence in Brooklyn for years. In 2020, yeah, and then and then posting like, bro, people get Rico cases, people get caught from like music videos all the time, and the same people that like their friends got caught up and got arrested, them same people will go on the camera and rap about the people that died, they murdered, and will literally throw up gang signs and literally have illegal guns in it. Niggas are just fucking dumb for clout. It's just all for clout, bro. If all right, say this was happening, right? Say, all right, all right, all right. Say, say like, all this violence and shit is happening off the camera, which it is. I know what it is. At least don't make music videos about it. Is it that hard to not rap and snitch on yourself about it? Because now there's kids in, like, Oklahoma, Wyoming, all these other places that's watching these drill shits and getting inspired, like, oh, this shit is cool. I kind of want to be like this. Let's not cap, chat. Let's not... Why do you think they ban... For example, they ban gambling on Twitch because they said kids, kids are going to start gambling on Twitch. So is that, is that the case, right? Do you think if people, if kids were watching drill music that shit, they're not going to want to imitate it? Like, come on. 34 members of the Wolves and Chos got hit with a 122 count indictment and are facing charges of attempted murder, assault, gun possession, and more. The NYPD Gang Squad started an operation to take down the gangs in 2018. Over the two-year-long investigation, they've been able to link the gangs to 13 shootings in Brooklyn and over 100 other crimes. The gun violence is what made the city start paying attention. If it was just gang members dying, the cops probably wouldn't have been on it as much. But when Wu and Cho affiliates started hitting innocent bystanders, the whole situation changed. A Wu affiliate named Sean Mason shot a random woman in the face. Where's the white? Oh, bro. This literally stopped about like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. This is literally 21 generations of, of the black community, of the African American descent, going to fucking shit. Most people are going to probably go back to the same dumb shit and be in jail for mad long, or some of them's going to die. Some of them will actually change. But this is literally 21 of uh, people that could have had like children, could have had an easy like could have had not easy life obviously, but could have like tried to stop. You feel me? 21, literally descendants of a black family, black community, black bloodline, gone to shit. And this is this is only one. It's only the Wu. It's only the Wu gang members, chat. And there's way more that we don't see. Fucking crazy. And then posted a video bragging about it on social media. Bro. And All right, people join gangs out of poverty. Bro, I was, I grew up broke as fuck. My mom raised four kids by her fucking self. Yes, I stole from the store sometimes, but I got offered to hit licks. I got offered to join shits. I remember one time um, at the football practice, there was one guy, I'm not going to say his name. He literally got me and my friends. He was like, yo, bro, like join this shit. We started hitting licks and shit, bro. Like, it was, we was all huddled up. I swear to God, bro. I got offered to do that shit. But me, as a smart nigga, I was desperate for money. But, chat, one of what I did for money, I went on PSN, I went on YouTube. I was like, all right, how did game share? I went game sharing. So, what I did when I was trying to get money, I would get mod accounts for game sharing, my account. And then, it was a risk. It was a high risk because somebody could have stole my account, whatever. Game shared, got mod accounts, then went back on Kick. I remember the old app, Kick. And then, start selling them on mod accounts for PSN, for Amazon, for anything, gift cards. And that's how I got money when I was younger. You can always, you have the internet, you can always find ways to get money instead of having to do this dumb shit, robbing grandmas, ro robbing people that's literally more poor than you. Like, there's no excuse. I don't care, there's no excuse. There's in July no 2018, excuse. two bystanders were shot in the mall after Wu and Cho members ran into each other and got into a fight. 43 members of the gangs were taken down in 2012 after the police went after them in a massive investigation. The Brooklyn DA at the time said they were engaged in open warfare and were responsible I'm for at least six murders depressed. and 30 shootings in less than a year. But after the takedown, members of the Wave Gang and Hood Stars continued beefing and rebranded as the Wu and the Cho. Most gangs are focused on hustling and making money, but the Wu's and Cho's are different. Depressed. According to the DA, they're not tightly organized around drug or other money-making endeavors. They band together to control their turf, their block, or their building, and terrorize those who fail to recognize their control and fail to pay them respect. Even after two major attempts to take them down for good, the Wu are still going strong. But these new charges could end up being a big blow to the gang. The Wu members who are allegedly involved ain't been tried or sentenced yet. But since they stole from the U.S. government, it wouldn't be surprising if the prosecutors try to make an example out of them. This story's still developing, so stay posted for updates. And people be like, oh, it's not their fault, bro. So it's not so. You, it's, it's so hard to just 